Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, I'm going to show you some examples of a final project for Web 114 JavaScript 1. And here I am at my home page. I've clicked the Web 114 JavaScript 1 link, and I'm looking at all the YouTubes that I've created so far for this class. I wanted you to have these YouTubes on the final project so that you could see where you're driving the bus. So here are your instructions on creating a JavaScript game and basically your challenge is just to use all the objects, methods, properties, events, functions, and programming constructs we learned in Web 114 to create a JavaScript game in a web page. And then I go into detail about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and all the things I'm requiring for your final project. But I think instead of getting into the weeds here, it would be helpful to have a demonstration of what students have done in the past. So that's what I want to show you next. So I'm going to show you examples of different approaches to this final JavaScript game. The first is showing a web page that immediately uses the window.prompt method to prompt for a name. So I'm going to put in my name and click OK. And then immediately that name is sent to me as a window.alert method. So I'll click OK and start playing the game. And your game will ask questions like this. And you can use input boxes or option buttons. In this case, I'm just going to enter two numbers. I can tell that on the input element in the HTML, I use type equals number because that creates these spinner controls on these input boxes. And then he's using a button. Please click to add the numbers and he's using a global variable, which he captured when he did a window.prompt to give me the answer using JavaScript. Down here, he used option buttons to just ask a question, is 50 greater than 100? If I say yes, then that's incorrect. And he's giving me a message, sorry, please try again, and he's changing a background color. So if I say no, then he gives me a different message with a different background color. So there's probably some if then else logic going on with this particular question. Here's yet another type of question in a reserved JavaScript word. And if I enter if and click here, then he tells me this is a reserved JavaScript word. I think that's what he used to load up an array. Here's another one. I'm going to refresh this. And immediately upon loading the web page, it's asking me for my name. In this case, she's using some sort of if then else JavaScript to determine if I said null. She's telling me I've had one try, I've had two tries, and if I refuse to give her my name, then she's assigning the name of Mr. H. Potter and using that information in her web page. Here again, we're using input boxes to demonstrate some of the things we learned to do. All of this comes out of chapter two, where we write JavaScript expressions with one number. I'll put 10 in here. I can add the numbers equal to 15 or subtract the numbers and the answer is correct. And she's also scoring me as I answer these questions throughout the quiz. And so that's another thing you might consider is declaring a global variable and then keeping track of their score throughout the quiz. He used an HTML table and then quite a bit of style to create his calculator. All of these calculations are done by JavaScript and he just used a nice HTML table and some CSS styles to make it look really incredibly interesting. So here's yet another example of what you can do. Here's yet one more. I like this one because multiple choice questions are typically mutually exclusive. I want the game to focus on JavaScript. If you're using JavaScript, ask a game about JavaScript. And so his first question, what is JavaScript? Is it a loosely typed programming language? Is it the same as Java or is it used to declare a function? Correct answer is A, submit answer. He gives me a message, good job. If I say B or C, and I submit answer, then the message is try again. And so you'll want to make sure you've covered each one of these constructs. At the end of your instruction sheet, I do give you some ideas. The next screencast is going to be how to get your web page started. Thank you.